Hello. What does it take to be a philosophizer? Can anyone be a philosophizer? Could you be one? What is the difference between a philosophizer and a philosopher? Today I'm going to read the preface of my book, Philosophizer. Uh, the second edition of my book, I called it the Black Edition, where I say a few words about how the book came to be written and why I don't like the term philosopher anymore. There's a whole army out there of philosophers, so-called, who all went to university, got their degrees, got their doctorates, went on to teach. And I know these people very, very well, because I was one of them. I got my doctorate. I taught at a respected university. But I've come to the conclusion that they are all nincompoops. That whatever subject they think they're doing, whatever subject they think they're studying, isn't philosophy. It's something else. Whatever it is that prompts inquiry into the ultimate questions just seems to leave them cold. And it's a, a puzzle. So it's, it's an increasing puzzle for me. Why they do what they do. So, I mean, if you want to know about them, you just have to go on YouTube. There's hundreds of videos by so-called philosophers. There's thousands of books by philosophers. You can have any number of, you know, explanations of how great philosophy is, blah, blah, blah. And it is great, but it's not great the way they teach it. They've made it into something else, something small, something arcane, something irrelevant, basically. And I'm not siding with the sort of the, the people who just hate anything to do with thinking and think anyone clever is, you know, is, is, is something they don't have anything to do with. I'm not siding with them at all. Because you do have to think. You do have to think deeply. But these people, these so-called philosophers, as I said, they're not thinking deeply. They're doing something else. They're playing some kind of game. Um, there's a book by the German novelist Hermann Hesse, The Gas Bead Game. It's very much like that. They're playing a game. And to become a successful student graduate student, you have to learn the rules. If you don't learn the rules, you're kicked out. If you don't learn the rules, you don't finish the course. And the ones who finish the course are the ones who've been thoroughly brainwashed. And they really do believe that what they are doing is what Plato and Aristotle and Socrates and all the rest did. Except they're not. They're on a completely different track. Academic philosophy has ceased to be anything recognisable as philosophy, in my opinion. Hence, the only way to sort of show my opposition to that is to come up with a new term to describe what I do. I'm not a philosopher, I'm a philosophizer. Question. How many roads must a philosophizer walk down? Answer. Only one. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Philosophizer was first published as an e-book in July 2016. Although shorter than the other books I've published, its content covers two decades of philosophical writing. In my book I am recounting a life, 
my philosophical life, as I called it in Glasshouse Philosopher. And I'm also wrestling with a question. To spend your time thinking about the same things over and over is not a way to live, some would say. I disagree. In my own fashion, I have lived a good amount, taken an interest in many things besides philosophy. But the ultimate problems are what they are. You can only return to them over and over again, each time going a little deeper. When I started compiling and writing materials for my book, I realised that I needed to do something different from what I've done previously, and break with the accepted conventions of academic writing. Although trained as an academic philosopher, I have made my career outside the academy, founding the website philosophypathways.com and going my own way without the need to constantly justify myself to my peers. The best way to read this book is to go with the flow. Don't resist, but give your whole self if you can. Allow your imagination to roam. Although at times you might get a bit scared. Don't worry. Here's something funny. The book you are holding wasn't originally called Philosophizer. In fact, that word does not occur anywhere in the text. My first choice of title was Semolina Pilchard. Strange as that may sound. That was the name of the penultimate draft, the title under which I gave out copies to friends and colleagues for their comments. If you read the first chapter of Sphinx of Black Quartz, the original title is self-explanatory. See below. Semolina Pilcher was the title I would have used, had the question not popped into my head, who writes a book like this? Not a philosopher, surely. Philosophers hunt in packs. They write for other philosophers, spend most of their working lives debating with other philosophers, or teaching their students how to become philosophers, in other words, like them. I was a philosopher once. Maybe I still am. After all, it's just a role one adopts for a particular purpose. I have my philosopher's hat, and when I wear it, I am a philosopher. And then the word came to me. In everyday usage, it's a word more often used to denigrate than commend, according to my dictionary. The term used for an amateur, not a pro. A word spinner, a sly piss-taker, a blagger. In fact, at times, a bit of a scoundrel. Here's a word, I thought, desperately in need of reclamation. And so I discovered my badge of pride, philosophizer. In the process of writing my book, I had unwittingly become different from what I was before. Transformed, like a butterfly from a dowdy caterpillar, light as air, no longer dragged down by the weight that all philosophers carry the weight of all that reason and logic. If you have a point to make, it should be there for anyone with eyes to see. You shouldn't need to argue for it, the way philosophers incessantly feel the need to do. But there was still a problem. In my book, I go deep, deeper than most persons can possibly imagine. I say this because I have tried and failed to imagine the deepest depths. A reader might get the wrong idea that the book is just meant to amuse, that it isn't serious. I am being dead serious. Hence the importance for me of the colour black. By black I don't mean heavy or gloomy, far from it. As I state in the chapter of that name, black is what you see when you close your eyes, when you shut off your senses and listen to your thoughts. However, in order to deal with things that have the deepest depths, you have to be light. I don't just mean light on one's feet, mentally nimble, quick to see. That's not enough. You have to lose the heavy weight of expectation, become carefree. Above all, you have to banish, once and for all, the nagging voices in your head of philosophers past, so ready to admonish or offer advice. 
Philosophizer is a record of my journey. You, the reader, have your own journey to make, which will be different from mine. I can teach by example, offering hints and pointers, but ultimately you have to make your own way. In any case, my intention is not to teach or preach. I've done enough of that over the years. Philosophizer is my personal statement. I am testifying. And if you don't get it, or worse, if my book positively causes you mental pain, then consider the possibility the pain is well deserved. Maybe you're one of those who need to be awoken from their dogmatic slumbers. In that case, I'm doing you a favour. Or maybe you hate the whole idea of philosophers straying off piste, trying to be writers instead of sticking to their methodical, plodding pursuit of the truth and nothing but the truth. Then you, got a good, then you need a good smack or a good kicking, your justified punishment for boring me to death. There is one philosopher writer I greatly admire who attempted something similar, Friedrich Nietzsche. In Nietzsche's works you will find aphorisms, maxims, poetry. Thus spake Zarathustra, Nietzsche's most radical attempt to break the traditional mould of philosophical writing, is a brilliant book, a powerful and original expression of his philosophic vision. Yet many would say it is far from perfect. Critics have noted that the language in parts is heavy-handed, hyperbolic, even clumsy. By contrast, Plato in his dialogues rises higher effortlessly. But I get it. I see why Nietzsche saw the need to express himself in the way that he did in Zarathustra. However, Nietzsche's question is different from mine. What is my question? I have many questions, but the ultimate question concerns what, what is, is. One reviewer of Philosophizer shortened this to what is, is, a formulation to which I don't object, recalling the words of the pre-Socratic philosopher Parmenides. Quote, I will tell thee the only ways of inquiry that exist for thinking, the one way that it is and cannot not be is the path of persuasion, for it attends upon truth, the other that it is not and needs not must be. I tell thee these are paths altogether unthinkable. Unquote. There is only is. Everything we attempt to say about is is falsehood the denial of the purity of being, ultimately self-contradiction. To say that something is such and such implies that it is not so and so, but not cannot be part of is or being. That's what Parmenides thought. For materialist-minded Nietzsche, on the other hand, being represented the last fumes of evaporating reality, as he called it in Twilight of the Idols. The point is not that all human discourse is reduced to meaningless babble, which it is from the standpoint of the metaphysically minded philosopher, but rather that the very attempt to say something philosophical about is collapses into confusion. The only truth that the philosopher can utter is, it is. I don't know about that, not for sure. I see the problem and all the problems and questions that follow from it. I don't have any ready solution. The questions I am asking are unanswerable, perhaps unanswerable in principle, and not merely incapable of being answered by beings with similar mental capacity to ourselves. Logic can only take you so far. That's my provisional conclusion. Logic is only a tool. When a tool doesn't work despite repeated attempts, you try a different tool from the toolbox, or maybe more than one. If you can't do the job with a hammer or a screwdriver or pliers, then maybe hammer and screwdriver and pliers will work. As readers of Philosophizer have discovered, I have found inspiration from diverse sources, such as rock music and photography. I was fortunate to grow up in the 50s and 60s Decades that witnessed an explosion of ideas in both these creative genres. 
My conception of art and its possibilities has been indelibly marked by that experience. And yet, strangely, during those two decades, philosophy in the English tradition was becoming increasingly obscure and irrelevant, with an obsession with analysis and the meaning of meaning. The notion that the primary job of philosophy was to analyse was still strong, if not stronger, at the beginning of the 70s when I started on my philosophy degree. Luckily, in my second year, I read Robert Persig's Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, and it was a turning point. As I noted in Glasshouse Philosopher, I could never look again at the professors of philosophy with the respect and reverence I had done before. Talking of rock music, if you didn't already know, the original title of this book comes from the Beatles track, I Am the Walrus, which I talk about in the first chapter, Sphinx of Black Quartz. No single artist or band can be credited with altering the course of Western culture, but without a doubt the Beatles, with their unmatched genius for musical and lyrical innovation, have a very special place. They showed the rock artists and bands that followed what was possible. I don't yet know what is possible in philosophy. But that is why I wrote my book. I'm still searching. Um, what is possible? Well, it's that was written three years ago. And uh, since then I wrote <coughs> Philosopher's Bible and also I might not have existed but someone exactly like me might have existed in my place which basically is my reworking of the thing I call the question <clears throat> I can't think of anything more important to do I can't think of anything else that I should be thinking about other than the fact that I am here as a matter of contingent fact that is completely and utterly inexplicable. There cannot be a reason why I am here and I cannot be a re here for a reason because whatever reason you give is a lie. Whatever reason you give is just some story and no story is big enough to explain the monumental, gigantic, impossible fact that I exist. And if you look at yourself, you will realize that this is true. Nothing is sufficient to explain why you're here. And no task no aim, no project could be big enough to justify your existence or explain it or make sense of it. Existence is just too big a thing. And I'm still, still searching for some way of coming to terms with that fact. Maybe there's another book there somewhere. I don't know. Um, I haven't done with Philosophizer. I think I'm going to read the first chapter in my next video. I'm not sure yet. Uh, um, just to give you a taste of it. Um, you can always buy the book. Uh, there's two editions. This is the one that I was reading from which is the black edition. It's got an extra 50 pages of notes that I wrote after I'd finished the book, um, which are quite important. They are sort of reflections on what I, on wh where I was going and what I'd done, etc. Um, and there's the preface. This is the original. You say, well, it's the same price as the bigger one. You say, well, why buy a smaller, why buy less when you can get more? because that's just consumerist thinking. 
you know get get as much as you can for the money uh, this one is thinner therefore lighter therefore it's easier to put in your pocket um, it's got a, a more interesting <laughs> more interesting cover um, you know uh, it really doesn't matter you know uh, you have to get out of this mindset of, of looking for value for money all the time you know um, economic thinking consumerist thinking um, the but both as I said both books are out there um, it really doesn't matter because the actual text itself is almost identical there may be one or two corrections that I've made um, not they're not important uh, anyway so I'm going to leave it there for now as I said next time I'll probably read out the first chapter to give you a little taste that's all for today bye